Good morning and welcome, everyone. It's great for you to join us this morning. Please remember, just as we start off, that we still have to follow COVID-19 protocols, so please keep your masks on during the service uh, and keep social distancing. There is sanitizing stations all over, so please, wherever you see um, some sanitizer, sanitize your hands, let's keep ourselves safe. Uh, but just a really warm welcome. Uh, if you are new to the service this morning, first time you've been here or you're just visiting, uh, please will you do us a favor. On the chair in front of you, there's a card that looks exactly like that. Uh, and so if you take that card and just fill it in, and then straight after the service, if you go straight down the grass area to the, your right hand side, my left, there's a coffee shop at the end. If you hand it in there, they'll give you a free cappuccino on us just as a way for us to say welcome, that you really enjoy uh, having you with us. Uh, and then also just a way for us to get your details, just to get in touch and connect with you. We promise we will not spam you. Okay, so please, if you do that, that would be really great. If you are online, there is a connect with us description link in the description. So please click on that and then fill in that. Also, if you have any prayer requests, that's a great way, a great place for you to just write that in and gives us the opportunity to pray for you uh, for whatever you need. Um, but really, just great to have you with us this morning. Then, or something that we do every week, it's a little different. Uh, can I ask if there's anybody who has had a birthday or anniversary in the last week? Just could you put your, your hand? Nobody? Okay, cool. Online, if you've had a birthday or anniversary, why don't you just put it in the comment? Uh, uh, that would be just as well for us, just uh, from us. Uh, we hope that you had a great day and that it's a great celebration and that you will have many, many more. Moving on. One very, very important announcement, uh, QBM, 28th of March, uh, 9 a.m. service, right at the end of the 9 a.m. service, we will have that meeting. It is the first QBM of the year, and it is a very, very important one. So if you are a member, please make absolutely sure to diarize that, make sure that you attend uh, so that we can have our quorum. We've got some important business to discuss for that. So please, please do make sure to be there, QBM, 28th March. Uh, then step in is already on its way. The kids have already gone over through to step in. So kids, if you're not in uh, Sunday school already, parents, you're welcome to take them through. Renska's at the back there. Renska just wave. She will take them through uh, just as they continue in their Easter series that they've already started today. They talk about I have sinned. And so just a cool way for them to learn in a very kiddie way um, what it means, uh, the story of Easter. And then lastly, you would probably, if you haven't been with us for a while, expect us to take up offering right now. We do not take up offering anymore. Uh, what you can do is if you've come prepared to give, there is an offering box in the foyer where you can just on your way out just slip some money in there. Uh, if you're online, there's also a description to, that says give, uh, and that will take you through to our banking details as well as our Zapper uh, facilities. Uh, but again, just a small mind to change. We want people to give. We don't want to take. Um, and so just we love people who give generously from a place of joy. Uh, and so just a slight change. But thank you to all those who continue to give to make um, what we do possible and to glorify God in your finances. Let me pray for us. Father God, thank you that we can come together this morning to worship, to, uh, to just hear from your word. Uh, I pray, Father God, that today as we go through this service, may we be encouraged, may we be strengthened. Father God, may we be convicted. Father God, in a way that we learn to grow, that we become more and more like Christ. Father God, to be examples, to be uh, just the, the ones who bear the name of Christ um, continually every day and to live with hope. And so I pray for the bless us today. May we bless and honor you as well in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with us as we worship. Stand. Praises from 
just come among us. Father God, may you dwell in our hearts. Father God, may you take up your rightful place in our lives. Father God, as the center of, of every decision, every choice, the center of who we are, Father God, may you sit on the altar of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may grab a seat. Morning, church. Morning, church. Morning, church. That's a bit better. Um, the beautiful blonde playing piano is my wife, Sharon. And in August, we're going to be married for 10 years. Yeah. So I wear a, a wedding ring. We've got a a certificate that says that we are married. We have a son, um, and Sharon even has my surname. But does that mean we have a healthy marriage? We've got all the things. We've got rings and certificates and children and a home. Um, we could have a fancy holiday house in Spain and we could drive fancy cars. Does it mean we've got a healthy marriage? It's possible to have a marriage without relationship. I'll say that again. It's possible to have a marriage without relationship where you are just legally bound together. In Revelations 3, uh, verse 16, it says, So because you lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out my mouth. A warm, fuzzy feeling. It carries on. In, well, it starts off in verse 15. It says, I know your deeds. You are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either hot or cold. This is God speaking to the church of uh, Laodicea. And he's saying, I, I don't want you to be in the middle. I don't want you lukewarm that I spew you or spit you out my mouth. I wish you were either cold or you were hot. Here's a quick question. Do we, you sitting here in front of me and people that are online, do we treat this church like the bride of Christ? My wife, I love her, I care for her, I spend time with her, I invest money, not that money is a determining factor in a relationship, but there, there's a financial commitment. Are we treating our church, which is Christ's bride, it's biblical, as our wife, or for the female version, as your husband? Or are we lukewarm towards Christ's church.
Now, the term lukewarm is, a, is, I don't know who's familiar. Anybody familiar with the term lukewarm in Christianity? Okay, so some people have heard the term lukewarm. This is what a lukewarm Christian would be like. It, it gets a bit better at the end, so just bear with me. A lukewarm Christian don't really want to be saved from their sin. They only want to be saved from the penalty of sin. God is a useful fire escape they employ. They, they don't really worship God. A lukewarm Christians are moved by stories of people who do radical things for Christ, but, but they don't do things. It's usually someone else that's doing it. Lukewarm Christians equate their partially sanitized lives with holiness. So Jesus didn't call us to sanitize, just wash our hands and, and to, you know, put a mask on. We, we actually need to be holy from, from, from our toes to the crown of our head. Lukewarm Christians think more about their life on earth than they do of life in heaven. Lukewarm Christians love luxuries and rarely give sacrificially. Um, that's talking about tithing and your time and, and various aspects, sacrificially. Lukewarm Christians do not live by faith. They, their lives are structured around about everything else around the earth. They, they don't live in faith. It's in what they can do. And a lukewarm Christian give God their leftovers, not their best. My heart and my prayer, and this is earnest, my heart and my prayer is for Christians to be co protected against the complacency with God. It is a burning desire that, that people realize that this is not a joke. This is not a little part-time gig Christianity. This is what life is about. It's about seeking Christ. My fear is that consumerism in Christianity and the free access to multiple teachings on YouTube and Facebook and various other platforms have made it too easy to do Christianity at arm's length. You in control because you just choose the sermon which picks you up that day. Or the message that you like, yeah, you'll like that one, you don't like that one because it might be a bit too close to home. We start selecting what, what we like in Christianity. We don't take Christianity in God's message in its entirety. My fear is that we get saved and then we go hide in a church where there's good coffee, there's air con, good music, and we just have to rock up maybe once a week. My worry is that we stop reading God's word to learn and grow, and we replace that with pre-recorded messages from multiple people that send you a message, and you just take that snippet as your teaching. You haven't read it and researched it, You've allowed someone to just spoon feed you. And don't get me wrong here, there's nothing wrong with teaching. There's nothing wrong with listening to a papa or to any, any good teachers that are out there. But there's a danger where that's your only source of teaching. There's a time where you need to take your Bible, either on your phone or a printed version, and to take text and to pray over it and to read it and to meditate over it and discover what God is speaking to you. To ask the pastor or someone, what does this mean? Because this is what you are interpreting or what you are getting a sense from Scripture speaking to you. Let you do the heavy lifting, not someone else for it, and you pick up just a spoon-fed message. I see less people joining church prayer meetings. I see less people coming to events. I see less people willing to serve when there's a work party or there's, uh, we need people to, to do something. I see less of that. My worry is that we become hedonistic. We fear pain. 
we fear discomfort, we fear anything that goes wrong, and we forget that God, in any adversity, is with us, comforts us, guides us, and builds our character and our, friend, our faith and our strength and our hope in Him. How's your relationship with God at the moment? Are you lukewarm at the moment? Are you feeling frustrated with God and so you don't try anymore? Has too much happened and you can't see how you can get it right? Is life just so busy? Are the consequences not real enough for you to change? I'm going to say that again. Are the consequences of not following God's word not real enough in your, in your life? So let me give you another example. So when you're speeding in your car and you're going at 200 kilometers an hour, there's consequences, am I right, if a traffic cop pulls you over. You can see what you're doing wrong. You can see there's a traffic cop. There's, there's a link between what you should be doing and what you are doing. Has our Christian life become so comfortable that we can't see consequences? We live under this free grace, and I am a grace. I believe in grace. But have we become too comfortable that, you know, if I miss church and I don't tithe and, you know, I don't really serve because, you know, I'm, I'm actually quite a good person. H have we become too comfortable with who we are in Christ or, or have we lost our righteous fear of God? Are you tired? And is it easier to stay who you are than to change? Okay, that's all the serious stuff. It gets a bit better because everyone looks a bit, a bit down. But my fear, and I'm going to repeat it again, my fear is that too many Christians have become complacent. They are happy to be a Christian, but they're not ha happy to do the heavy lifting, the uncomfortable, the hard, the sacrificial part, which Christ calls us to be. The Bible is full of hope. The Bible is full of God's plan for you. It speaks about what Christ has accomplished on the cross for you. The Bible is full of guidance on how to live according to God's plan. And it has warnings for our good. Billy Graham, a great um, evangelist for Christ. I'm taking 10 points that he has how to live a life that will keep you from being lukewarm. Number one, read your Bible daily. Here's a quick one. In 2012, uh, let me get my facts right, uh, 2012, people were spending 90 minutes a day on social media, the average person. Who's got Facebook here? Who's got WhatsApp here? Who's on Instagram? Who's on another platform? Let me ask you a question, because the, the, the finger points back at me. I'm 12 days behind on my Bible in a year reading plan. I haven't, missed, I haven't missed one WhatsApp message, and I'm up to date on my Facebook profile. I'm not perfect. The fact that I'm standing up here preaching a message is a challenge for me to do more. When I say do more, do more for Christ. If you had to take the amount of time you spend on Facebook, could you replace that time and read God's Word? You could. In 2019, the amount of time people, people are spending on social media has increased to 155 minutes a day. My, my concern is that people are saying, I'm, I feel so far from God uh, you know, I, I don't feel connected to God. 
yet reading God's Word, it's easy. You could take 15 minutes a day and you could get through the Bible in a year. I promise you, there's a Bible plan through version. There's, you can do it. Reading God's Word has multiple benefits. Number one, it's a discipline. Number two, it's God's Word speaking to you about how He is with you in all situations. It encourages you. Do not be content to skim through a chapter to merely satisfy your conscience. Hide the Word of God in your heart. It comforts, guards, corrects, encourage. All we need is there. That one thing. Replace the time when you wake up in the morning and check your Facebook. I do it. Ask my wife. I do it all the time. I could replace that time and spend quality time reading God's Word. Before I go to bed, I could replace that time and read God's Word. Number two. Learn the secret of prayer. Sorry, none of these are new. You're going to notice all of them are are nothing new. It's no new teaching. But if you follow these 10 principles, you'll be in a better place than you were a few minutes ago. Learn the secret of prayer. Prayer is communicating. Every prayer that you pray will be answered. Sometimes it will be yes. Sometimes it will be no. And sometimes, which people hate, is wait. Rely constantly on the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit prays for us, that He will comfort us, and that He'll stand aside us, and He will guide us in making choices. Number four. Sorry, guys, this is a tough one, but I, I'm going to put it out there. Attend church regularly. Okay. The visible church of Christ, organization upon earth, Christians need one another. We need to gather to worship God, and nothing can take the place of church attendance. And my biggest fear with Corona is that people have made it an excuse why they cannot come and sit here in church and fellowship and worship together. Because it's easy to say, well, you know, I can just do it online. I'm not, repla- I'm not saying that you can't do online services. Don't, get, don't misinterpret me. I'm saying do not take the easy option and say, well, I'm just going to watch it online because it's actually easier for me. Because the commitment to come here is your commitment to Christ. Number five, be a witnessing Christian. The witness is in two ways, by life and by word. And the two go hand in hand. There's an old saying that says, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, open your mouth. Let love be the ruling principle in your life. Jesus said to those who followed him, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. The greatest demonstration of the fact that we are Christians is that we love one another. Number eight, learn how to meet temptation. Temptation is not sin. It is the yielding to temptation that is sin. Let Christ, through the Holy Spirit, do the fight for you. Number nine, be a wholesome Christian. Our lives and appearances should commend the gospel and make it attractive to to others. My previous point, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, open your mouth. Live above your circumstance. Do not let your circumstances get you down. Live live graciously with them, realizing that the Lord himself is with you. So what now? 
statistically is that by 12 o'clock today that most of us would have forgotten 80% of the message that I've preached. Tomorrow morning, the statistics just go down. My hope and my prayer is that you don't feel terrible about yourself. This is not a, I'm such a bad Christian and I should be doing this and, you know, I, I never get to pray and I never read my Bible and I never attend meetings. It's not, that's not what you should have heard from this message. The message is Christ has so much more in store for us. An exciting relationship like the relationship with my wife, where I need to make sure that I'm making time for her, that I need to make sure that my phone doesn't take precedence over her like it does, that I'm investing time and money and energy and love into her. And I pray that you do that through the church. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I'm going to pray for us. Gracious Father, we exalt you in the precious name of Jesus. I pray over the words that I've sp spoken, that people's heart are not, is not, are not filled with condemnation, but their hearts are filled with hope, that they are filled with an excitement for the life that is lived with you. That any situation that people find themselves in, be it financial, emotional, relational, spiritual, any aspect of their lives, that they realize that you are so much greater than that. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you guide us into your righteousness. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thanks, Richard. Um, <clears throat> will you stand with us? Please stand. As we uh, start worship, I just, uh, we sing a song, What a Beautiful Name. And just as Richard spoke, uh, something that came back to me again was sometimes our problem is not that we, we don't want to have our lives changed. Sometimes our problem is that we, we forget who Christ actually is the beauty that is in the groom. Um, and so yes, we are the bride, but we should be excited. We should be excited for, for the wedding day because we love the groom, because we love the one who's standing there waiting in anticipation for the day that we join him again in heaven. And so as we sing, what a beautiful name, think about that. Think about who it is that we're doing this for. Think about the sacrifice Christ has made, but not just the sacrifice, because sometimes we get stuck there, we just, we, we just think about Christ gave his life up for us, but we don't remember that Christ gave up his life for us out of an absolute, undying love that surpasses even what we can understand. And so as you worship, think about that. Think about who it is who's waiting at the altar, waiting for us to join him.
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name. What a powerful name it is, 
nothing can stand again. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. It's for God, what a powerful name it is. Name it which every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that you are Lord. So Father God, this morning as we think upon just those 10 things that the preacher spoke about, Father God, may our hearts just be, be reminded again, be in awe of the beauty, of the wonder, of the power that is in the name of Jesus. To save, to give hope, to bring wholeness and to overflow. So Father God, may you bless us. May the name of Jesus be ever on our lips.
ever be on my lips, ever be on my life, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be praised. God, we just thank you, Lord, that, that we can praise you. Maybe just take a moment just to think about what, what are those things that you praise God for? I praise God for, for the fact that I'm changed. I just praise God for the fact that he took someone who was broken. He took someone who, who felt worthless and gave them purpose. Praise you, God, for the fact that you, you never give up on us, even though sometimes we give up on you. I praise you, Father God, that, that you don't just meet us halfway. Father God, you continue to nudge us, you continue to put people on our path that will challenge us and, and encourage us. And Father God, my only prayer is that as, as you nudge, as you reach out to us. Father God, may we respond. Father God, may we swallow our own pride. Father God, and see the blessing that awaits us when we come to you. Father God, receive the blessing that comes to us when you bring healing, when you bring wholeness. And Father God, even when you bring correction, that we see that we can live lives that are fuller, live lives that are are so much more blessed, not lives that have no issues, that have um, problems, but lives that, that have the hope that is centered and anchored in Christ Jesus, who died on the cross, who rose again after three days, and sits at the right hand of God, waiting for us, preparing a place for us to be with you continually. So we bless you today, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, my prayer is that today as you go, that you remember the, the message and really apply it. You know, make a, maybe a note of one or two things that you need to.